This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show. Uh, my name's Chris Abraham, formerly known as Chris Cast. This is Season 5, Episode 2. The last episode was in January, and I'm starting again because one person on Mastodon said that they won- they're they wondering if I'm still podcasting. And see, honestly... It's not like I need a thousand people to keep me going. I just need to know that I'm not yelling into space like a madman. So as long as I'm heard by one person, it is worth it to me. I will come back and tell you about why I've returned to podcasting. Today is a special day in many ways. Talk to you soon. Hey, today is March 8. Today is my birthday. Today is International Women's Day. Women's Day. Uh, Today I'm 53 years old. And yesterday I jumped on the scale, my Withings Smart Scale, and it told me that I was 298.5 pounds. Now, I make a lot of promises into the world and I sort of challenge myself for a lot of things and I oftentimes come short um, come up short but I had promised myself that I would be under 300 pounds uh, by my birthday so 298.5 is cutting it close not a lot of buffer but I did it so I'm very happy about that so I took today off and really just completely farted around And uh, now I'm doing this, and uh, it's Wednesday. Uh, I didn't plan anything for today. In fact, I believe I kept my head down so as not to be responsible to or for anything today. I can start again in the, uh, uh, the Sisyphusian task of my life. But for today, it was just uh, chillax. I didn't even do anything. I cooked a very large hamburger patty and spoiled myself because I know I know that my cardiologist is going to at the end of three months on the 13th or 14th 14th is going to allow me to have guacamole and uh, yellow squash and zucchini and um, uh, olives and um, and so I took the liberty yesterday of buying some olives and buying some guacamole. And even though guacamole isn't strict carnivore, nor is it just strictly avocado, I wanted to have some. So yesterday, I gluttoned. I know I just got the 298 uh, measure on the scale, but I went... And uh, yesterday afternoon, I first of all, I made a beef burger breakfast and then had a an omelet at Idito's and then couldn't help myself. I bought a bunch of olives. I bought a grocery store chicken and I bought some guacamole and I made a feast of it last night. And this morning I had guacamole over, leftover, so I cooked up another giant beef burger patty and I smothered it in guacamole. So that's pretty much all I ate today. I had uh, a couple other things, but uh, hopefully that didn't derail uh, my diet. I, I want to lose another 80 pounds so wish me luck on that but everybody wants to hear how it happened and all the stories about it so right after this brief break I will try to just sort of soliloquy 
about the process and wh what worked and what didn't work and all those other things. All right, coming back. Oh, very flawed. It's a, a TLDR or no, um, uh, do, you know, I will give you a brief peek um, in terms of the next segment and there's a lot of up and ups and downs not everything's perfect there were a lot of plateaus a lot of uh lost ground um and it wasn't easy but it's not hard either i'll be right back all right so uh six months ago i was 350 pounds and high A1C. Hey, Google, what does a high A1C mean? On the website cdc.gov, they say your A1C result. A normal A1C level is below 5.7%. A level of 5.7% to 6.4% indicates prediabetes, and a level of 6.5% or more indicates diabetes. Within the 5.7% to 6.4% prediabetes range, the higher your A1C, the greater your risk is for developing type 2 diabetes. So, um, six months ago, I visited my uh, cardiologist and he did labs on me. And the A1C and the uh, indicated diabetes, he called me um, and he called me like after I left. He called me when I was at giant food. He called me on my cell phone and said, Chris, um, uh, authentic, maybe you should get this, this, uh, we need to make you lose weight. This authentic thing is for diabetes. Um, you need to, uh, give yourself a shot once a week, uh, in the belly fat and that kind of stuff. And, um, so, but on that day, when we were at the appointment, he said to me, listen, wink, wink, I can't prescribe this to you, wink, wink, but I feel like it's time to, to be extreme. So he unofficially prescribed me with a carnivore diet. And, um, hey, Google, tell me about a restrictive carnivore diet. I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey, Google, what is a carnivore diet? According to Wikipedia, the carnivore diet is a low-carbohydrate fad diet in which only animal products such as meat, eggs, and dairy are consumed. The carnivore diet is not supported by evidence-based medicine, and it has attracted criticism from dietitians and physicians who have stated the diet could lead to vitamin deficiencies and increase risk of chronic disease. Hey, Google, what is um, a restrictive diet? On the website racheladdard.com, they say, restrictive diets are any type of diet that cut out major food groups or calories for the sake of losing weight or reducing fat. People also sometimes ask me, what is considered a restricted diet? Do you want to hear the answer? Yes. On the website nia.nih.gov, they say, calorie restriction means reducing average daily caloric intake below what is typical or habitual, without malnutrition or deprivation of essential nutrients. In a fasting diet, a person does not eat at all or severely limits intake during certain times of the day, week, or month. I don't think I mean that, though. I think, um... Hey, Google, what is it called when you limit your uh, uh, diet based on maybe being allergic to things? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Uh... I think restricted, no. Um, there's a term for when you stop eating things to check out whether or not you're allergic or have inflammation. And I don't remember what the word is, but it is um, that, right? So the biggest thing that Dr. Lux, my cardiologist, thinks I'm suffering from is a big problem with inflammation. That seems to be the uh, gut of all the problems that I'm having. So by uh, reducing the number of types of foods that I can eat for, it's been six months now, 
because he was so amazed at the uh, at the appointment after three months that my diabetes type two diabetes had completely gone away that he thought we'd try it another six months and uh, the next meeting that we have, the next appointment, he is going to, like I said, put me back onto yellow squash. He calls them uh, fruits, but what he really means is not sweet fruit. He means yellow squash, zucchini, avocado, and olives. So I'll be able to add that, which is okay, because yellow squash and zucchini are two of my favorite what I call vegetables, and olives and avocados are my favorite fatty um, foods, fatty plants to eat. Um, So I wonder if I'll also... Oh, and with regards to how they define the carnivore diet, I've discovered that I was really leaning very heavily on dairy and that my regularity and my health and my energy and all those other things are better if I just stick to beef, butter, bacon grease, processed bacon, you know, bacon, I'll have it. Uh, In this diet, chicken seems to be too lean. Most meats seem to be too lean. Once in a while, I'll add liverwurst because I don't eat liver, but I like liverwurst for the nutrients that I don't get in just um, beef, salt, uh, eggs are ubiquitous, butter, like I said, um, black coffee, black tea, water, and I add this um, this fancy expensive salt called LMNT, the letters LMNT, and I do not drink the one that tastes like seawater. I drink the one, they come in packets, uh, I drink the LMNT additives that have flavor in them. I'm suffering through some really awful ones that I bought off of eBay. They're very expensive, and the ones that I bought off of eBay are like habanero, frickin' lemon habanero, and like really weird, hot, frickin' strange chili, uh, lemon chili, and this crazy stuff. Like, they're so uh, strong that I need to dilute them more, and when you open the packet, uh, the waft of waft of the powder literally burns, like literally, not even figuratively literally, but literally burns your nose as if you were, I don't know, sniffing habanero. So, uh, how did it go? I seem to respond very well to being prescribed something or being ordered to do something. It probably in my nature, I really did well in JROTC. Being ordered and complying isn't bad if someone, if an external force orders me to do it and I respect and trust them, then I do. So mostly the kind of cheating I've done, like I cheated a week ago and I stopped at uh, Bob and Edith's diner, which is a local, like a local famous diner that's here on Columbia Pike in sexy South Arlington. And I ordered a double bacon cheeseburger with the bun. And I didn't order fries. I didn't order toppings. I didn't even order like lettuce, tomato and onion or whatever. And I considered taking the bun off when I got home and just making it a bacon and beef kind of something very compliant in the carnivore world. In fact, I'll tell you some more secrets that I have. Um, But I I ate the bun. I just did. And uh, also, as I've been going to Idito's, uh, which is my favorite cafe uh, on around, it's on Walter Reed uh, near Columbia Pike. And I've been eating uh, their unmolested, uh, vegetable omelet with rye bread toast uh, whenever I order a meal there. It's mostly eggs, um, but there are vegetables and the uh, dry uh, rye toast. And I, when I want to cheat, I'll do that. Um, otherwise, 
some of the things I cheat with is I'll have, uh, um, I'll have, um, um, is it chicharron, chicharron, chicharrones? Um, I'll have, uh, um, crispy, you know, pork skin or whatever it's called. Um, and that will be a cheat instead of, instead of chips. Uh, I will cheat, uh, with, if it's not easy to get, if I, if I ran out of, uh, beef or whatever, um, if I ran out of, I will eat deli roast beef, which you're not supposed to. I will eat some spam. I will eat, uh, some beef hot dogs. I will eat, um, canned roast beef, which is just awful. I will have those kinds of processed crappy things. If I get caught out and I really need a big protein and fat beef experience, I will order a number of um, McDonald's triple cheeseburgers and I will throw away the buns or give them to my, my crows or... You won't believe it. I overordered and I went into the park to eat my burgers, uh, leaving the uh, buns behind. I might have told this story. And there was like a homeless guy looking at me and he walked over and I had an extra quarter pounder. So I gave it to him. And then embarrassingly, I said, hey, listen, I do not want to foist a bunch of buns on you. I feel like I don't want to give like I'll never offer to a guest I will never offer them something I wouldn't enjoy eating myself so I only have a a quarter pounder left and I will give that to you but I also have like five uh, McDonald's cheeseburger triple buns left over as well in these bag in this bag and I'm intending just to throw them out so if you'd like, instead of having a 10 patty burger with two buns, you can have a one patty burger with 10 buns. So he accepted. I gave him a bottle of water and that was our interaction. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a thing. If you go onto Reddit and you look it up, people oftentimes like freaking dollar menu the hell out of McDonald's and throw away the... Um, the, you know, they might order special or you just order, uh, the default ones and scrape off the stuff you don't want to eat. Um, in general, in addition to that, and I, this is so boring, I'm sorry, but in addition to that, I generally don't eat after six, generally don't eat after three. Um, I don't eat until like nine or 10 in the morning. And so, uh, I, I used to try to do one meal a day and then not eat for 23 hours um, or do a 20 slash 4, 20 colon 4 uh, diet where I would eat in a four-hour window and uh, fast for 20 hours. But the, um, the carnivore diet is so relatively relatively restricted restrictive anyway that it really didn't matter Uh, counting calories that closely doesn't seem to matter Um, there are things that people in the carnivore diet might do they might wander over to the fridge and take a bite out of a or cut out of a um a bar of butter because believe it or not if you're a weightlifter you need to keep up with your protein but carnivore diet is not a high protein diet. It is a no, a no, uh, carb, uh, a no carbohydrate diet. But it is a moderate protein and a high fat diet. And here's the rub: the rub is all of this stuff requires a whole heck, like the most intentional thing in this diet. And this is really important. The most intentional thing that you have to keep on top of with this diet is hydration and 
making sure that you get your electrolytes. Like I said, those, uh, uh, those crazy, where is it? Don't they, don't they, don't they? Those crazy element. Let me see. I got one here. Uh, one element packet, uh, gives you a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Now, uh, I make sure that most of my water has at least one packet of LMNT in it. I, I picked up an entire, I, mean, I don't know why, I picked up um, a 101.4 fluid ounce Deer Park. I bought two of those. And so I've got like 202 fluid ounces of Deer Park water. And I put two packets of uh of element t in each each one they say that each packet is enough for around 20 30 ounces of water so i put in uh, 60 ounces worth of element t and 100 ounces of water and at that level i think that it's uh it's diluted enough just to give me uh not to over hydrate you know not to oversaturate me with sodium or or do anything like that but make sure that the um, electrolytes are kept to a good enough standard so it's really important here's another thing if you think of of uh if you think of food as as medicine you also have to get the dose right right so when they say eight glasses of water they're referring to someone of 150 pounds right um to be honest, like, hey, Google, how many ounces are in three liters? Three liters is equivalent to 101.442 fluid ounces. To convert from liters to fluid ounces, multiply units of volume by 33.81. So, I theoretically need 155 to 165 fluid ounces of water a day, right? Eight glasses of water a day, eight times eight is 64. 64 ounces of water a day is uh, appropriate for a 150 pound person. I was a 350 pound person. So my requirements for water were double that, right? So 16 glasses of water a day to be appropriate to my physical size. So if you are morbidly obese and you're only drinking eight ounces of water times eight a day, 64 ounces of water a day, you are, you are dehydrated. You're chronically dehydrated. And it's not easy they say it's not easy to maintain to maintain 350 pounds, but it's it's enjoyable, right? Like being like being fat is its own reward, right? You get to eat and eat and eat. And if you love eating, then frickin' you get to eat and eat and eat, right? Like it's not it's not torture. If you hate food, maintaining 350 pounds is hard. Um, but drinking. 165, 155, 150 ounces of water every day. You can just like, if you don't pay attention, hours will go away and you won't have any water. And you need to make sure that you are not um, getting dehydrated. One thing that my Withing Scale does is it tells me when I'm losing muscle, when I'm losing bone density, and when I'm losing, when I'm underhydrated. So, even though I don't weigh myself that often, I am currently, uh, and I need to work out way more. I walk a lot, but I need to get onto my erg and I need to get to the gym and do some serious weight training because like my muscles are atrophying. Um, when I get back, I'll tell you how much, how much torture it really was being 350 pounds. Talk to you in a few. I don't know, is it on Apple Plus TV, Apple TV Plus, or where is it? But there's a TV show called The 
a consultant and this is going to be a um I'll give you warning like if you haven't seen the show yet I don't want there to be spoilers but uh one of the issues in the show is that the consultant can't climb stairs without help and uh it turns out that this magical creature um is only human by appearance and that he is sort of if you will a uh, an evil pagan golem and he was created uh by the hands of a jeweler who hand created every single bone in a human skeleton uh, out of gold so uh, according to google uh, an entire human skeleton made of gold is I th- 200 pounds. Hey, Google, how much is a human skeleton made completely out of gold? 0. 0.2 milligrams. On the website indiatoday.in. They hey, say, Google, average- how much would a human skeleton weigh if it were made out of gold? On the website williamlhan.com, they say, if all that mass of bone converted to gold, the total weight would be 102.96 kilograms of golden treasure on the hoof. People also sometimes ask me, how much do skeletons weigh? Do you want to hear the answer? No. So the irony here is that uh, I am aspiring. Okay. The, the funny thing here is that I'm aspiring to be uh, 100 kilograms. And a human skull made entirely out of gold would be 102 kilograms, which is around... Uh, 122, 120 something pounds. And um, that is what it's like being 350 pounds, right? It's like having uh, a 150 pound body and then so the, the bones on their own are around 20 pounds. So a, um, a uh, gold bones would be, if you will, um, 200 more pounds than regular bones, uh, skeleton, skeletal bones. So that extra 200 pounds is exactly what I had on my body, uh, when I was 350 pounds. So if you picture it and you see, uh, you see the consultant unable to walk up and down stairs, You'll re- and because he's having these troubles, because he is a 120, 130, 140 pound man trying to uh, carry an extra uh, 220 pounds upstairs and downstairs, you'll realize the challenges that people who are morbidly obese have. Um, and I'm not, I've only lost 50 pounds. I have another, I have another 100 pounds to lose. And so I'm not adjusted yet. I do not, I do find it much easier to come, go up and down stairs, but I, I, I am still, um, uncomfortable with my footing. I still feel insecure. I still feel self-conscious. I still feel like everybody's looking at me and I still tend to stick to the elevators. Um, I was down at the convenience store today buying these big bottles of Deer Park water. And um, the woman down there is the owner's auntie. And even though we're probably around the same age, she tends to mother me a little bit. And today she told me that she really noticed the weight loss and asked me if I had lost weight and then warned me that maybe I'm losing weight too quickly. And, uh, I don't know, someone who, I might have had an eating disorder when I was uh, in high school wrestling. I might have liked to not eat ever and felt superior to everybody around me by not eating. And going out with my friends to McDonald's and feeling superior to them because I only would drink glasses of water at McDonald's, those kind of things. But... And then needing to get below 180 as a six foot three kid in uh, muscular wrestler to have to uh, do all of my runs in in um, rubber suits and 
spit all the time and chew bubble and chew gum and spit uh, the water out and other kinds of crazy things. I might have an eating disorder predilection uh, that sort of, but I do not think that I lost weight too fast. In fact, it was extremely slow and I hit setbacks and I hit pl plateaus and I would get injured and feel sorry for myself and maybe have a pint of ice cream or do something like that. And so I did hit a number of plateaus. So, um, I feel like the, here's the thing, here's the thing about the, um, the exponential, the ability to, when you lose weight, it's exponentially easier to lose more weight. And let me explain. It's like the hockey stick, right? You barely can hobble around at, for me, six foot three, 53, um, 52 or whatever. Um, moving around 350 pounds isn't easy, right? I would go on these walks and so forth, but like I would walk slow. I, you know, it would, it would burn a lot of calories. If you were 350 pounds, it's like rucking with 150 pounds in your back, right? You do, people get pissed when they see, when I go to spin class and stuff, how many calories I burned, but they adjust for how much you weigh, right? So, it's all proportionate calories. Don't be jealous. Uh, but ev the lighter I get, the more I want to be active, the more I want to be outside, the more I want to get in the erg or the rowing machine, which is the same thing, or the ski erg or, or, the, um, or even my bicycle outside. Um, and taking the stairs and all these other things are becoming more and more opened up to me with the goal that I want to do a weekly park run every Saturday at Roosevelt Island. I want to um, get on my bike, cycle down there, do a slow jogging 5K, and then, you know, meet new people and maybe, you know, afterwards walk into D.C. or bike into D.C., you know, live an outdoorsy kind of life, uh, have some fun in the city that I'm in, be a little bit less of a shut-in if I am. And uh, there's a lot to look forward to. I am not going to change this diet. But if the doctor says that I should have zucchini and yellow squash and avocado and olives, I will really enjoy adding those things. I would love love to along, you know, to have a plate bisected with, you know, beef on one side and a big thing of sautéed butter. I can do that. Butter sautéed zucchini and yellow squash on the other. What a joy. And uh, and I feel like it's really getting closer. I feel like it's getting really closer. Uh, other news right after this break. <laughs> So in addition to this, uh, my friend Kaushik has an open invitation to me uh, to go to um, the gym during the hours that he's there. So I will be uh, heading down starting next week probably uh, every day down to Crystal City. And to the gym down there um, and spend, you know, two hours an evening uh, just getting my gym rat uh, feedback, you know, doing some, uh, some Nautilus, some, some Smith, some uh, body weight exercises, some dumbbells. I don't know if they have any free weights, but I would like to at least emulate uh, deadlifts and emulate uh, other types of things and squats and machines and pull-downs and lat pull-downs and heavy rows and leg presses and all that other fun stuff. I'm really excited 
about it. Um, and I'll just go down there every day. Like I'll bring my phone so I could do, if I want, I can do a earth data. I can do my rowing down there. I can do, uh, whatever it takes down there. I can take my meds at like 6 PM and then immediately turn around and bicycle and eventually jog down to planet fitness in crystal city. Uh, Hit or miss whether or not I see Kaushik. Uh, he's really having some great success. Really getting pumped every day. Getting completely uh, jacked. He's like the... Um, he's like the... Uh, uh, um, he's completely become a Marvel hero. He says that he only has a... Uh, uh, a swell... That he only has, like, that he's only jacked for uh, an hour after he works out. But that's the way everybody's everybody's body works out, especially if they're not extremely lean. So, uh, everybody has a pump at the gym, has a pump right after the gym. That's why when people are about to do their, um, their big photo shoots or their... Um, shirtless scenes in movies and televisions they always do uh so, oh and abs i've got to do lots and lots of abs i've got to do burpees i've got to do planks i've got to do roller abs i've got to do all these things and so i'm really excited to start doing that i'll start next week um and uh you know we'll see what happens like um uh, the last six months have felt like forever, right? It's been uh, so many times of desperation. And, you know, honestly, I don't feel that much thinner. I mean, the clothes don't hang off me. I don't really notice uh, whether I've, the 50 pounds is just, you know, did I keep all the wrong places? Like, I don't feel like I'm swimming in my clothes. I don't feel like my jeans are completely loose and baggy on me. I don't feel like I'm ready to be at the point of buying an entirely new wardrobe. So that might be such a an extreme amount of obesity, of, of, of morbid obesity on me that it's like inconceivable, but I take it that the next uh, 80 to 100 pounds is going to be much more noticeable. And... Uh, I'm very excited about it. So that's the strategy. The strategy is, um, and, and it worked, right? Whatever they say about uh, keto or whatever they say about intermittent fasting or whatever they say about carnivore diet, you know, recently in the last few days, there's been a lot of articles about how the keto diet is going to give you strokes and make you die. But having an extra, uh, frick, an extra 200 pounds, 100, yeah, 200, an extra, basically, if we're going to compare everything to 150 pounds, like, I should be 180, right, so, it's, um, it's, a uh, 170, 170 extra pounds, right, that's, that's a lot of, that's an, that's like carrying around, uh, a pretty good shaped, five foot ten like man like on my back all the time or you know like a a normal shaped american woman hey google what's the average weight of an american woman hey google what is the average weight of an american woman 170.6 pounds on the website healthline.com they say the average American woman 20 years old and up weighs 170.6 pounds and stands at 63.7 inches tall. And the average waist circumference, it's 38.6 inches. So it's like walking around with an average American woman uh, on top of me all the, or like on my back, like on my front, on my sides all the time. Uh, and that's what it's like. So. Uh, I still don't feel it. Like I still, it's all numbers. It's all numbers and what other people see and and weigh-ins and so forth. I'm just not feeling. I look in the mirror, I see the same fat face. I look in the mirror, I see the same gigantic belly. 
like I do not see it yet. And um, I'm hoping to really start. Either I've got, you know, body dysmorphia where I cannot see the loss of weight in the mirror. Like it's literally impossible for now. Or it just hasn't turned a corner. And there's just been so much fluff and so much extra weight that I that it's not really going to uh, like the final hundred is going to be the real change maker there. So I'm hoping for that. Uh, until then, I'm going to be as extremely strict as I can be. Uh, when I gave up carbs and in. Uh, March 2020, I gave up drinking. Uh, you know how like your friends are like, the moment I gave up beer, the moment I gave up bread or whatever, I melted weight? Like that didn't happen to me. Like I have to be really vigorous and rigorous. Like I have to aim at 1,500 calories every day, even though I know it'll either be, you know, 2,000 or 2,500 by the end of the day, just because of, you know, dumb shit. Um, I need to be careful not to eat too late. I need to be careful about what I do eat. I have to be careful about portion control. I have to be careful about all those things because um, I do not have the satiation button anymore. What I uh, I made a joke today that someone didn't laugh at about gluttony being my you know mortal sin. Um, sometimes sloth, but oftentimes gluttony. And I think that if you have a combination of sloth and gluttony. Those are very hard things to, you know, to live through, right? Those, the reasons why sloth and gluttony are on the seven deadly sins is because um, they're literally deadly sins, right? Uh, murder might be deadly to someone else, but gluttony and sloth is murder to yourself. Like gluttony and sloth are a kind of, um, I wouldn't say it's an Irish suicide because that's drinking yourself to death or that's getting drunk and having a cop kill you. But I would say maybe it's an American suicide. Uh, American suicide is through sloth and gluttony. I do not know if that's true anymore because of the fentanyl and opioid crisis. But I would say, traditionally speaking, heart disease and uh, the other kinds of chronic chronic diseases uh, that result in early death. Uh, nat they call them natural death, but like those com comorbidities that allow you to get st struck down by uh, simple things like colds and flus and so forth are things you really have to worry about. Anyway, I really appreciate you listening to me. I don't know if this was useful at all. I didn't script it, so it's completely off the cuff, and it shows. I can tell already that it uh, is a complete giant mess. But hopefully one person uh, on Mastodon will appreciate it, and I will talk to you soon with closing remarks. Love you guys. All right, season five, episode two, uh, about my journey. I do not know if I covered everything or nothing. If you have questions, please let me know. You can follow me on Mastodon at chris at abraham.su. You can email me chris at abraham.su. You can call or text me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can find me at chrisabraham.com. You can find me uh, at, tw at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram. Uh, you can find me uh, chris-abraham.com on Tumblr. I am user Chris Abraham on Reddit. And uh, if you use plus one two oh two three five two five zero five one i think you can also like i said text me but you can also telegram me you can signal me 
Uh, you can WhatsApp me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's it. Uh, you can follow me or subscribe to me on any of the podcasting platforms, but my home base is anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham, maybe? I don't know. And I'll talk to you soon. Please give me any kind of feedback. I'd be really appreciative. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.